Hi, my name is Sherry DeShaff and I am a physical therapist specializing in women's health and I am now eight or nine days postpartum and if you've been watching any of my videos I've been talking to you guys a little bit about exercise for the first week postpartum um, as well as wearing an abdominal binder and the benefit that I found from that. So today I decided to start a little bit more core exercise. I'm laying on the floor in case you couldn't tell. That's why I look a little bit funny, but I thought I'd start with doing a test for diastasis recti. You might've heard of that. It's where your abdominal muscles split. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a self test for that. And you guys can kind of see exactly how you can do that to yourself at home um, when you're about this stage postpartum. Um, it's good to keep in mind that if you do find that you have a DRA at this stage only a week out, it's kind of normal, most women do. I think the, the majority of women do have one at this point, and most of those will close um, you know, on their own by about six weeks. If you haven't closed by six weeks, then you're gonna wanna give me a call or another qualified provider in your area to get some treatment for that. Um, you're not gonna wanna leave it until months down the road, trust me. Um, so without further ado, I'm gonna move the camera here a little bit so you can see my belly. So I'm laying on the floor, my abdominal binder's behind me, I just took that off after I laid down. My knees are bent up, and I'm just going to put my fingers right at my belly button there, lift my head, and you can see that I can put about two and a half, well there's two, let's see if I can give you a better view, two fingers going down, right, pretty deep down into my belly, past my second knuckle there. So. I would call that, now I've got about three there. So that's definitely a diastasis. Okay, so I have one at this point for sure. I come down under the belly button, I can still put about three fingers above the belly button. It's a little bit tighter, maybe two and a half, but I would self-diagnose that I definitely have some separation there. So when I do my core exercise, I'm gonna be very aware of that. I don't wanna see any bulging, any tenting up of the tissue there, nor do I wanna see um, kind of a separation or that valley appearing when I do my core exercise. So that's your self-test for diastasis recti and please let me know if you have any questions. If you just watched my last video I talked about self-testing for diastasis recti that's why I'm laying on the floor um, on my back with my knees bent. I just checked for diastasis found that I have a little bit of one so I'm gonna be real cautious with my core exercise at this point but I am gonna start a little bit of a march because I wanna get my transverse abdominis to engage a little bit more and start to work my abs with a little bit more motion than just an isolated contraction. So if you're gonna do this with me here, go ahead and lay on your back and bend your knees. And then we're just gonna start with a little bit of isolated contraction, feeling for the transverse abdominis, you find your hip bone, then come just into the inside. And we're gonna feel kind of deep down there taking a breath in and then as, as we exhale, we're gonna feel for just a tiny bit of tension underneath there. The other thing that we wanna feel for is that you're not getting a lot of activity up here um, in your obliques, which when I just tried this a moment ago, I was getting quite a bit of activity up here in my obliques um, versus here in my TA. So I'm just focusing on kind of relaxing that upper area and just activating the, the deeper abdominal muscle. So to do that isolated contraction, we're gonna breathe in letting the belly expand and then exhale and drawing that belly button down and in trying to keep relaxed here so I can feel there that that contraction was better I didn't have as much oblique activation and I could still feel a tiny bit. I'm really honestly not feeling a whole lot here in my TA, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm eight days postpartum. So we're gonna add a little bit of a march to that. So I'm gonna again, feel for my DRA. So my fingers are right here in the middle and I don't wanna feel any increased separation there while I do this exercise. If you feel increased separation, then it's too much for you and you need to hold off. So I'm gonna put two fingers down in there and I wanna feel both sides of that rectus abdominis against those two fingers. Um, closing so I engage my transverse abdominis draw that belly button down and in and then I'm gonna lift one leg up and I don't feel any DRA happening there breathing contracting and lifting just up to 90 degrees I'm 
not feeling really any rectus contraction, so no separation of the abdominals. Just really constantly keeping an eye on myself that I'm doing it correctly. So that's an abdominal march. And again, safe to do if you can do it without aggravating your diastasis at about eight or nine days postpartum. So hope you enjoyed that tip and I'll see you again soon. Have a great pregnancy and a great birth. One more exercise we're gonna do today uh, for starting core exercise is called a bridge. So if you're not familiar with the bridge, I'm gonna move the camera over so you can see kind of my whole body there. So bridge, we're gonna start with a breath in, then exhale as we tilt the pelvis under, roll the spine up off the floor until you have a nice straight line between the shoulder and the knee, and then roll back down. So you should feel a little bit of activation in your tummy. You should definitely feel some activation in your glutes. You might feel a little bit in your hamstrings. So nice, gentle, good for spinal, spinal mobility as well as starting your core strengthening. So enjoy that, and I hope these tips today have been helpful for you. Feel free to email me or contact me if you have any questions, and I hope you have a great pregnancy and a great birth.